Would you like to stand if you're able for worship?
Yes, Father God, we thank you for your power and your glory, and we just thank you that um, we can worship you here this morning, and thank you for all the good things that you have done for us. Amen. Fantastic. Sorry, I've got one very clingy boy here this morning, so he's just going to stay by my feet, I think. All right. Um, well, I'm going to start with a few notices. We'll get those out of the way because then we can move on to the nice bit um, of Nathaniel's dedication. So um, I wanted to let you know about a couple of things, especially that are happening um, the week of the 20th and 21st that weekend. So the Saturday, the 20th of January, we are going to have a kind of prayer and retreat time here at church. So it'll be from kind of one o'clock till five o'clock. Um, with the first couple of hours from one till three, this room will be open for kind of private prayer. There will be some prayer stations around the place, so some kind of different interactive um, activities that involve prayer um, that you can get involved in. Um, and then you can just, or you can just sit and pray in your own way, um, whatever suits you. Um, so that'll be from one o'clock till three o'clock. And then from three until five, it will be a bit more of a kind of organized kind of prayer time where there'll be some kind of prayer together. So there'll be a load of worship. Um, there'll be some kind of prayer activities that we're all going to do. Um, so that is a prayer and retreat time. And we're going to be looking at kind of the year ahead. So what that is partly individually. What is God saying to you for your year ahead? And partly um, for kind of us as a church, what is he saying to us for the year ahead? So put that in your diaries. That is January the 20th, uh, the Saturday afternoon from 1 till 5. Um, and then on the 21st, as well as our normal Sunday morning service, where we'll be looking a bit more at this kind of prayer aspect and seeking God, um, in the evening at 5 p.m., um, it is the day of prayer for Christian unity. Now, that is a worldwide um, kind of day of prayer for Christian unity and as a local area we've decided to meet up with um, St. Mary's the local Anglican church and St. Patrick's the local Catholic church and we're going to have a joint service together uh, where we can pray for Christian unity and worship together um, so that is really exciting that's five o'clock at um, on the 21st and that we're going to meet at St. Patrick's but Dave's going to lead worship and I'm going to preach. So they have asked us if we will do that in their building as a show of unity, that we lead that over with them. So um, that's really lovely. So that's um, five o'clock on the Sunday, the 21st. So it's a couple of dates for your diary that I really wanted you to know about. We do put these things, A, on our newsletter and B, on our WhatsApp to kind of remind people. Now, if you don't get our newsletter or you don't get the WhatsApps, We've done a handy form that you can fill out. Um, so you can write your name down here, the phone number if you want to do your WhatsApp, and an email address if you want to get the notices. Okay, so this will be kind of, I say floating around, hopefully not actually floating around, um, kind of out in the foyer after the service. And if you don't get those already, it is really helpful because we send all sorts of reminders um, and other things that go on, on those WhatsApps and emails. Um, Two other notices I just wanted to give today. One is that we are still on the hunt for some other people to be on our kids' rotors on a Sunday morning. So if you think you might be able to do that, you don't have you can lead a group if you want, but we're also really short of just helpers, so the extra body in the room. So if you think you could be a helper for either our um, youngest group, for kind of the, the three to six, seven-year-olds, or the seven to ten-year-olds, or even older than that, just let us know. Um, and we would really, really love if you could help us in that way. Uh, the visuals team is also really needing someone else who's in charge of, of the words and things at the top. So if you think either of those could be part of your New Year plan, uh, then please do let me know. We would be really, really grateful. Um, and then coming up this year... Um, in April, end of April I think, is our church weekend away. There'll be more um, announcements about that to follow, but if you know nothing about that, there are flyers um, out in the foyer and we'll start to give some more information soon. Fantastic. Okay, that is the important notices kind of done and out the way. So we can move on to the dedication. So I say, welcome again. 
uh, to the friends and the family of baby Nathaniel. Now, I do refer to him as baby Nathaniel because I have my own Nathaniel stood next to me here. It's going to be harder for him, I think, as he gets older. He'll be like, you know, 15 years old and still be being called baby Nathaniel. Um, I do recognise he's not really a baby anymore. I've even seen him walking around this morning. So he's... <laughs> He's doing really, really well and growing up fast. So welcome again to all the people who've come here especially to celebrate his dedication. So I want to explain the purpose of a dedication because it's not a christening. We're not going to dunk him in water today or sprinkle him with water. Um, as a Baptist church, we um, believe that people can decide for themselves when they're older to get baptised. So this kind of pool here, this comes off and there's kind of a little mini, a giant bath or a big a tiny swimming pool uh, under the ground here and people choose to get baptised when they're older, which we do have a date coming up later in the, in the springtime for anyone who does want to get baptised. If you've never been baptised and want to be, this will be your opportunity. So do speak to Dave if that is something that you would like to do. Um, so what is this then if it's not a christening, if it's not a baptism? Well, it's a thanksgiving because we are so thankful to have Nathaniel in our church and all the joy that he brings and the life that having children in our church brings. So it is a thanksgiving for him. It's a welcome into our church community. As a church, we want to officially... Yeah, that Nathaniel, yeah. Not, not big Nathaniel. Baby Nathaniel. Uh, we want to officially welcome him into our church community um, to ensure that he knows and his family and his friends know that he is always welcome here and he will find help and support in any way that is needed in his life. Uh, it's also a naming ceremony. Uh, Chris and Brenda will officially tell us the name of their son and we will kind of announce that. It's a blessing. We want to pray a blessing on Nathaniel, um, a prayer of good things over him. And it is a time to make promises for Nathaniel's parents to make promises, for his friends and family to make promises, and then for us as a congregation, we can join in and have these promises as well. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome today Brenda and Chris and little Nathaniel and their friends and family. We want to acknowledge that Nathaniel has many other people in his life as well who aren't here, who love and care for him, and because of distance and other factors, aren't able to be here. So I want to acknowledge that not all the people who, are, who love him and will care for him and will be part of his life are here today. I'm going to read um, a Bible passage from Mark 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing their little children to Jesus for him to place their, his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, Let these little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For these children, um, the kingdom of God belongs to children such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and he blessed them. So just as Jesus welcomed children into his arms and into the kingdom of God, so we want to recognize that and follow his example. So I'm going to invite up Brenda and Chris and Nathaniel to come up to the front here. I want to stand here. So do you want to tell me what name have you given to your son? Nathaniel Jaramogi Jones. Nathaniel Jaramogi Jones. And I mean, I know from myself, Nathaniel means gift from God. And uh, he obviously is a really special gift that God has given you. Yeah. Um, and then Jaramogi, what does Jaramogi mean? Uh, it means courage. Courage. So we hope that he will... Well, we know he will grow into his name and show courage in his life and in his life ahead. So Nathaniel Jaramoji Jones, we name you and we greet you. You are already part of a loving and caring family. And we welcome you into the wider community that is your home, that is this church, where you will always be welcome. So I think we've got the promises coming up on the screen, which is really helpful. Yeah, hello. Are you all right? Yeah, do you want to sit down? Are you guys all being very wiggly this morning? 
Yes. Okay. So um, they are coming up on there so that you can see what Chris and Brenda are promising. So Chris and Brenda, do you thank God for the gift of Nathaniel? And do you accept the joys and the duties of parenthood? Gladly we do. Do you promise to bring up your son within the Christian community and so that by God's grace, he will be nurtured by Christian love and surrounded by the life of Jesus? We do. So friends and family then who are here to support Chris and Brenda, um, I'm going to ask you if you want to join in with this promise, if you could stand up now, that would be fantastic. If you're able, don't worry if you're not able to. Fantastic. So friends and family. Will you, as members of Nathaniel's family and his friends, help Brenda and Chris as they bring up Nathaniel and promise to surround him with all that is good and true? We will. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, and then you may remain standing if you wish, if you want to join in with this next one. This is for the rest of the congregation. So if you want to stand, if you're able to stand and you want to, then um, we're going to make some, a promise together um, for Nathaniel. So gathered here as members of this congregation and as representatives of the wider Church of God, do you promise to offer Nathaniel and his family your love and support? And by being faithful in prayer, will you share with him your faith by word and example? We will. Thank you very much. You may take your seats. I'm going to pray for you, Nathaniel. Are you trying to escape? Is that what it is? Let me pray for you now. Faithful God. In faith and hope, we entrust to you this child's future as it stretches out before him. Protect him in moments of danger. Reassure him in moments of doubt. Strengthen him as he passes from childhood to youth and from youth to the life of an adult. Surround him with your love expressed in people who care for him and give him those with whom that love can be shared. And grant that when understanding comes, he may believe in you as Lord and Saviour that he may choose to follow you. Amen. Right, I'm going to see if Nathaniel will let me hold him right now. Hang on, not you, the other one. Stay there. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Because I want to pray a blessing over you as well, and maybe even anoint you with a bit of oil, if I can do that. Yeah? So... So, Nathaniel, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Nathaniel, may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Nathaniel, may the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. 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 Now, I have... Oh, I did have... Nathaniel is for you, and it's for you whilst you get bigger, but we have written a prayer for you in the front here, okay, so you can have that, that can be prayed over you at home, do you want to take this, do you want to take it, you got it, no, should we give it, we'll give it to dad, there we go, now I think, have we got another worship song now, is that possible? Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to sing another worship song, um, and as we do that, um, Brenda and Chris can kind of walk around with Nathaniel and you guys can um, either shake his hand or give him a high five and just welcome him into our community.
time for our young people to go to their groups um, if you don't know where you're going um, there'll be a few of us out here to kind of guide you on your way so uh, let me pray as you go so father we thank you for our young people I thank you for our children and our teenagers and Lord we pray a blessing upon them that generations would know your love mm -hmm. and uh, Lord that as they go to their their groups that they would find out more about your love for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing another song now, so please stand if you're able.
thank you that you are the miracle worker. Yeah. You are the one who makes a way when there seems to be no way. You are the one who brings light in our darkness. Yeah. And we praise you because you are worthy of all praise. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat. For the new year, uh, we are having um, a, a new kind of prayer slot uh, within the service that focuses on one of our activities that goes on um, in the building during the week. We recognise that for many of you, you're working during the week um, and you're not always kind of aware of all the th things that are going on in, in this building and uh, further afield. So uh, we have a couple of slides. Um, it's under prayer slot. <laughs> and today we're going to focus on Open Door, which started last winter as a warm space. So opening our building every day, Monday to Friday from 10 until 12. Um, just as a place for people to come, get free tea and coffee, um, have someone to chat to if they want to, um, biscuits uh, and those kind of things. Now this, uh, I didn't have many photos of that, I'm afraid, uh, but this was one of the activities that we did off the back of something else that was uh, an afternoon tea for uh, Mother's Day, I think. Uh, and as you can see, the lounge uh, next door was kind of full of uh, mums and babies. And as we go forward, uh, looking to open a cafe here uh, to expand what we're doing, and I'll talk more about that later, um, this is the kind of a, events that we want to be holding, engaging with people in the community, blessing them. Uh, this was just to bless um, the, the, the mums and, and celebrate them on Mother's Day. And... Um, yeah, they, they had a fantastic time. We did like proper afternoon tea with scones and, and, and cakes and stuff. Uh, and they had a fantastic time. So it'd be good to pray for Open Door. Um, that's still going and has various different forms. On, on one day, it's a knit and natter group. On another day, it's kind of open for board games. Um, and, and we're looking to kind of expand and change that as, as things develop with the cafe vision. So um, let's, let's pray for that. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we have the opportunity to invite people into this building, that we have the opportunity to bless people, that we have the opportunity to um, feed those who need feeding and give a hot drink to those who need a hot drink and to provide somewhere warm for those who need it. Lord, we know that in our world, in this country, at the moment, many people are struggling. And Lord, uh, you... You want to provide uh, for those people, and you choose us to help you do that. So, Lord, as we uh, go forward into this year, Lord, we pray that more people will come and, and access uh, Open Door. Uh, more people would be blessed uh, by this place and the interactions that they have here. And they would see the good news of Jesus, that Jesus loves them. And that they would also hear that good news. In Jesus' name. Amen. It would just be worth mentioning there's a number of our uh, congregation who are in hospital at the moment. Um, so Linda Anslow is in hospital um, awaiting uh, appendectomy. Um, so having her appendix out. Um, Ruth has just been in and had surgery, and um, Karen's husband um, has had a heart attack, and he's in. So it would be great if a couple of you that know them uh, could, could just pray out uh, for those guys who are in hospital at the moment. Nice and loud.
Amen. So our our sermon today, we're kind of looking forward. Uh, Firstly, I need to say Happy New Year to you, because it's the first one we've had since the New Year. So I hope uh, that this year will be full of love and of peace, of joy and of hope. Uh, That's my prayer for all of you. We today are focusing on Isaiah 58, um, and it was, it was something that Barbara said to me, I think Jenny might have mentioned it as well, um, and it just kind of really captured, I hope, what we are hoping to do as a church, uh, what we feel our calling is as a church. Um, now, just a little bit of a health warning, uh, the beginning part of this passage is a bit heavy, Okay, but it gets better. Okay, (laughs) so bear with me. Bear with me. Sorry, it's a. a, Can you read that? You got your glasses on? Great, that's fab. (laughs) Shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud, don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sin. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We've fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves and you don't even take notice. I will tell you why, I respond. It's because you're fasting to please yourself. Even while you fast, you are oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind, You dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No. This is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burdens of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here, he will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumours. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out of the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, 
giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength, you will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some challenging words there, yeah? Some challenging words. So the people of Israel, they kind of thought they were doing what they should be doing. They were going to temple every day. They were crowding in. They were worshipping. They were saying the set prayers. They were fasting, giving up food. They were doing everything that they thought they should do. But there was a huge, huge problem. And that problem was their hearts. Their hearts weren't in the right place. They were doing things because they wanted to to manipulate God to get an answer. If I do this, then God will do this. It can be an easy trap to fall into. If I pray every day, God will do this in my life. If I just come to church, God will bless me. If I do this, then if I... Yeah, read my Bible every day. Then God will bless me and have favor on me. Now, all those things are good. Don't hear me wrong. All those things are very good. But if we're doing them to try and manipulate God, try and impress God, then actually we've totally missed the point. What God wants is our hearts. You see, we can come to church all dressed up in the nines, next picture, with big froofy hats. <laughs> I, was, I was Googling um, uh, church suits uh, to try and get a good picture with um, people in suits in church. But apparently there's a whole like clothing line called church suits, which is just like really posh, smart clothing, almost like you're trying to outdo one another with how snazzy your suit is or how beautiful and uh, amazing your dress and your hat is. It's like, what is that all about? As you can tell, I don't really do suits. Um, And part of the reason is because I want to be the same person standing up here talking to you as I am during the rest of the week. I don't want to put on a a show, put on a different mask um, up here and not be that person day to day, which is why I don't tend to get dressed up for church. Sorry. Um, You can wear whatever you like. I really don't mind. Um, But God isn't really impressed by what we wear, so... Um, so where was I going with this? So yes. Um, <laughs> so don't try and impress God with big Bibles or coming to church or God doesn't need our religiosity. He doesn't need it. What he wants is our hearts. And he talks a lot about fasting in this. Now, for those of you that aren't kind of really aware of fasting, uh, fasting is a a discipline where you give up something, often food. Uh, Sometimes people give up food and water for a short time. Sometimes it's giving up, um, uh, say, Facebook or, 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 or something else, denying yourself. And these guys were trying to do that to get God to do what they wanted. And they totally missed the point. Now, fasting is good. Um, Fasting is helpful. But it's helpful because it's taking something out of the way of us focusing on God. It's not about us trying to get God to do what we want him to do. It's about God trying to get us in a place where we can do what he wants us to do. 
Does that make sense? Okay, that's very good. Um, Because I can't say it again, I'll get all confused. Um, It's about getting ourselves in the right place. It's about surrender. You see, these people weren't surrendering. They were still, they were quarreling. They were oppressing their workers. They were treating them badly, not paying them fairly. They were taking advantage of people. But still trying to put on this religious face. It's, it's something that's often leveled at Christians, isn't it? Oh, you're all hypocrites. And I've got to hold my hand up. Sometimes I am a hypocrite. I don't live up to the standard that I would like to live up to. I don't always get it right. I often fail. I often muck up and and not do the things that I know I should do. Or treat people the way I should treat people. But that is the heart of Christianity, is that it's admitting that you haven't got it all right. That you aren't perfect. That in your own strength, you can't be good enough. It's only by the grace of God who forgives us when we mess up. Who's there when we fall over, picking us up. It's only by his grace that we can can be in that relationship with him not through going through the motions so we don't have to dress in 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 sackcloth and ashes which i hope is the next slide there we go people in ancient days would kind of put on really rough clothing and cover themselves in the ashes from the fire to make themselves look really kind of miserable and at the heart of it it was a, like a brokenness a, a real sign of grief but these people were just doing it as a show not because they really meant it so what is the kind of fasting that god wants Can we go on to the next slide? The kind of fasting I want is to remove the chains of oppression and the yoke of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Isn't that an amazing message? That God wants us to be free. He wants us to not just live life kind of bound up by all the things that hold us back, But he wants us to live life in all its fullness, in its abundance. But he says to us, free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free. Remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. And do not hide from relatives who need your help. It's our response to what God is saying. He wants us to live in this freedom, but we've got to set other people free. He has given us this mission, this task in this world of bringing his kingdom to earth. I don't know if you're familiar with the Lord's Prayer that says, your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's sometimes easy to think about God's will being done in heaven uh, and the kingdom of God being kind of this up in the clouds thing. But what God asks us to pray is that his kingdom will come on earth and it comes through us. We are the agents of the kingdom of God. If we can go on to the next slide. Now, as a church, we're involved in a number of different organizations, a number of different uh, kind of outreaches that seek to put this into practice. Food bank, we have a food bank here every Thursday. Um, Many of you that regularly attend the church hopefully know that. 
Hopefully you know that there is a box um, just under the stairs where if you want to bring food any week, um, dried goods, tinned goods, um, you can put it in there and that will go to food bank. An essential service at the moment with so many people struggling. What you might not know is my role in, in food bank here is um, not just to kind of give out the food, but help signpost people to other agencies that can help deal with kind of what the actual root cause of them having to end up at, at food bank. So um, I, I will kind of chat to people, see what their main kind of issue is, whether it's debt, whether it's um, high energy bills, whether it's they haven't got any benefits coming in at the moment, or whatever it is, and try and signpost them to people that can help. We as a church are involved in Hope Into Action, which houses people who are homeless. Um, the charity buys a house, uh, and then the church provides a, a friendship and support group for the people living in that house. And we have a lady who's been living quite long term now uh, in a house just on the estate here, um, who was supported um, out of homelessness. Christians Against Poverty. We financially support Christians Against Poverty, which are an agency that help people, anyone, not just Christians, anyone, out of debt. Uh, they will talk to creditors, they will, um, they will kind of consolidate debts when they need to be, uh, they will come up with an affordable um, payment plan, and at the same time, uh, there's an opportunity just to speak Jesus' life and love into people that they're working with. Clothing Coventry uh, is, is literally clothing those that don't have clothes. Um, it's a brilliant organisation and often we kind of pass things on to them. And then Good Neighbours Coventry um, are a befriending service that work with um, age... Age UK and Coventry are together for change and a number of different organisations. And people go and just visit people in their houses for half an hour every, every fortnight. Just bringing hope to those who are lonely, those that are isolated and cut off, mainly elderly. Um, and they're always looking for uh, befrienders. So if that's something that you particularly feel called to do, go and sit and have a cup of tea with someone and a biscuit and, and chat, um, then I can, I can tell you where to go. So as a church, we want to bless people. We want to reach out. We want to feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Uh, we want to provide homes for the homeless. And the kind of next step in this vision is to um, open a cafe here that is on a pay-what-you-can uh, basis. So people can come if they can afford to buy a coffee and a cake and a roll or whatever it is, then they can. If they can't, then that's fine. Um, but more than just a cafe as a business, a place where we can engage with people a place where we can bless people, a place where if people need help, we can signpost them. If they need access to the internet or a printer, we can help them. Just these very kind of simple things, but like if you don't have access to the internet, then you can't do any of your benefit forms. You can't do any, you're basically isolated, you're cut off in our world today. So we want to be that for the people of Walsgrave. And things are progressing, but very, very slowly at the moment, I must, must say. We're still waiting for some grant money to upgrade the kitchen. But if you would like to be involved in that vision, and some of you already are through volunteering with Open Door, um, then please come and talk to me. 
we need loads of uh, people. It might be that um, it's simple, something simple as baking a cake. Or it could be that you just come and uh, sit in the cafe for a couple of hours and host and, and just chat to anyone that comes in if they want to chat. Um, there's so many different ways that you can help, that you can be a light in the darkness. Someone, someone once said, <laughs> that's very vague, isn't it? I think it was, is a YWAM thing, the two hands of the gospel, is that correct? So youth with a mission, they talk about the two hands of the gospel, the good news. One is that kind of seeing the good news, the practical outworking, and one is hearing it. Because if we only do the practical, then we're just basically a glorified social services. And whilst it might meet some needs on the surface, it doesn't meet people's deepest need, which is to know that they are treasured and that they are loved that their creator loves them and wants a relationship with them. But if you just have that, the word, the message, and people are hungry and people are starving, then it, it's dry. It, it, it doesn't really mean anything. So we have to have the two hands of the gospel. One of our values as a church is declaring and demonstrating the good news of Jesus. And it's not one or the other, it's both, and they both go hand in hand. Good news and good deeds need to go hand in hand. So what can we do? Well, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're just a visitor here today, you can bless someone this week. Maybe when you go to the supermarket and there's a, the food bank trolley in the supermarket, just pick up a few extra bits and chuck it in. You're helping to feed the hungry. Maybe it's visiting that, that neighbour a couple of doors down who's on their own and you know that they haven't got much family who visit them. Maybe it's in your work. Maybe you need to um, just take that extra little bit of time and care with the people that you interact with, valuing them for who they are and not just the next to-do thing on a list. There are so many ways that we can demonstrate God's good news. And God wants us in this place of surrender, where we're surrendering to him. So we're having a, a day of, of prayer coming up on the 20th that Amy talked about. But also, it would be great if people wanted to, to fast. Maybe just give up uh, food over lunch, if it's safe for you to do so. If you're diabetic, possibly not. If you're pregnant, possibly not. Uh, yeah, or breastfeeding or, or whatever. There's, there's lots of things. But if, if you feel that that's a helpful thing to, for you to do, surrendering that need for food, then I want to challenge you to do that. As we pray about the way ahead, the journey ahead this year as a church, then I'd encourage you, to fast as well as pray. Now, we're not doing it just to get God's attention, to impress him, to feel more holy, but to put ourselves in that place where we can concentrate on God so that we can be the people and do the things that he wants us to do. So as we come into a close, how are you removing the heavy yoke of oppression? How are you feeding the hungry? Because when we do, our light 
will shine out from the darkness and around you will be as bright as the noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing stream, like an oasis in the desert. And a garden is full of abundance in it. It's full of fruit. It's full of vegetables. It's full of good things to eat. Nourishment for those around. That's who God wants us to be. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are wanting our hearts. You're not wanting our religious practices but you are wanting us, the deepest part of us, so that you can be in relationship with us. And Lord, we know that sometimes we mess up, sometimes we fail, sometimes we don't get things right, that we uh, cause pain to ourselves or others, uh, that we argue, that we uh, just mess things up. But Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. And Lord, I pray now that you would forgive us where we have messed up. And Jesus, we thank you that you showed us what a life of surrender looked like. Because you surrendered your very life on the cross. You died for each one of us that we can know an abundant, free, whole life in you. So Lord, would you challenge us this week? Would you speak to us? Would you move us into action this week? Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
So may you go this week setting the oppressed free, feeding the hungry. May you go shining your light in the darkness. And as you go in a place of surrender, may you know the grace and the blessing you guys well thank you for those of you who are visitors for coming um, for all of you you are really welcome to stay and uh, we're going to have some food together it's a bring and share um, so if you brought some food uh, it'd be great to put it in the kitchen um, whilst we're setting up in the hall uh, which is kind of down here and at the, the end We'll be serving some tea and coffee in the foyer here. So please grab a tea and coffee in the foyer um, and then we'll 